was shoved into corners, I was knocked around, I had my stuff stolen and thrown off my desk. I actually started self-harming because I thought that was the only control that I had in my life. I felt like I had to hide every part of my body. Once I kind of looked at it like, hey, you don't have any power over me anymore because I'm not letting you, that's when it really stopped completely. So basically growing up it was kind of, it was me and my nan and my pop. So my mum lived a couple of streets away, um, so she wasn't very stable when I was born. So my nan and pop just kind of took me in for a bit. Dad was never really around, so there's not an option. And so I've just lived with them since I was about a week old. And so, but my nan and pop didn't exactly get along all the time. So they were kind of fighting and like one of my earliest memories is standing on the bed between them screaming at them to stop fighting. With mum, like living a few streets away, like I stayed there sometimes, but I didn't really grow up with my siblings or my mum. So when they moved, it was just kind of really difficult to um, cope with it at first because it was just before that that my grandfather died and so he was the most important person in my life at the time. Because Sarah had been through so many hard things at such a young age, her mind started thinking that she had no control over anything in her life. And then when she started getting severely bullied, her mind just assumed this was one more thing that she couldn't control, and she got into a really dark and scary cycle. Well, I was bullied a lot in primary school and through high school. I was shoved into corners. I was knocked around. I had my stuff stolen and thrown off my desk. I was told if I was a boy, I would be in hospital or dead by now from one of my bullies. And that was in grade six. Every time I tried to like speak up about it, I was always told there's nothing we can do. We're not witnessing it. So it was just kind of pushed to the back of my mind, like, oh, you know, you can't get help. They can't do anything for you. So I just thought there was nothing that could be done about it. I felt completely hopeless. I isolated myself. I shut myself down, didn't talk to my friends. I would close my bedroom door or lock myself away and just put my headphones in because that's all I knew how to do. I actually started self-harming because I thought that was the only control that I had in my life. I thought that if I could control the physical pain I felt, the emotional pain would just go away. Because I was harming myself, I felt like I had to hide every part of my body because like, I didn't feel like any part of me was worth showing. Like I was isolating myself, I always had my hair like pulled back and if I could I would wear a hoodie. I had a bunch of bracelets all up my arms and I just felt like I couldn't do anything about it and it made it worse because I was fighting with myself internally as well as fighting with people externally and that just, <laughs> that didn't help at all. My brain was just kind of imploding within on itself. We can't control what happens to us, but we can control how we're seeing it and how we respond to it. So for Sarah, as long as she felt like a helpless victim, she was actually giving her power away because she was saying that other people's words and actions had the power to control her. And as soon as she stopped doing that, everything changed for her. I just kind of learned to look at things slightly differently in life. So instead of looking at things like, I have no control, I have no power, I can't do anything, I'm looking at it like, well, what can I do to change this situation? And I kind of realized it's not the way, like I can't control the situation, but I can control how I react to the situation. Well, I started reaching out a lot more with different support networks. So I reached out to certain counselling services or the school counsellor. I reached out to my friends a lot more instead of isolating myself. 
I went through programs and camps that helped me look at different things. I've started up my own positivity page now on Instagram and on Facebook. I stopped harming myself and I haven't for a very long time now. I find now that I acknowledge my emotions and I let myself feel what I'm feeling instead of like keep, trying to keep it inside. So instead of bottling everything up, I acknowledge, hey, I'm sad about this specific thing and I let myself feel, I let myself grieve for whatever it is, I let myself cry, I let myself be happy. Whatever emotion I'm feeling, I just let myself feel, go through that feeling and then I, like, I'm so much better after that. I write a lot, so I write poetry, I write stories, I write lyrics. Or I practice playing my ukulele or just small things that I do that just take my mind off of what I'm thinking of. And as soon as she built up this strong sense of self and figured out her coping strategies, Sarah was able to see these hard situations in her life from a different perspective. And she was able to develop new and more helpful ways of responding to them. And then she also gained a whole different perspective on her life by doing this. The bullying kind of faded out on its own, but I, feel, I found out that once I kind of looked at it like, hey, you don't have any power over me anymore because I'm not letting you, that's when it really stopped completely. I used to kind of react with sort of anger, like yelling at them, why are you doing this? Or just completely ignoring it and letting it happen. But when I started to change the way I'm thinking, the way I'm reacting towards them, they're like, oh, she's not reacting the way I want her to anymore, so I'm just not gonna bother. I kind of tried to speak with them and reason with them. And sometimes that worked, sometimes it didn't. So sometimes talking to them like, hey, you know, why are you doing this? Are you okay? And actually trying to relate to them, checking up on them. Because sometimes, a lot of the time, bullies are just hurt people. Because hurt people hurt people. I had a moment at the train station the other day where it was pouring rain and I looked up at the sky and I'm just looking like, I am perfectly content with how my life is right now. I am so genuinely happy and at peace with my life. <laughs>